Hi everybody, uh, welcome to our Facebook live chat. Today we're going to be discussing e-cigarettes and e-juices that are marketed in large part to young people. If you have any questions either right now or at any time during the discussion, please feel free to post it on our Facebook event page uh, in the discussion section. I'm Emily Bazar, I'm a columnist and uh, I'm a columnist at California Healthline and Kaiser Health News. And with me today are Anna Ibarra. Uh, Anna is a reporter who covers this issue for us. And Stephen Jensen. Stephen directs Yolo County's um, tobacco prevention program. Yolo County is near Sacramento. Uh, and last year, the county banned the sale of all flavored tobacco products, including uh, flavored vape juices and menthol products. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, about a year ago. But let's start with some props. Mm -hmm. Those are going to help us tell the story uh, much better than our words can. So what do you have to show us, Anna? So Emily, I have for you some e-juices. And now e-juices are the liquids that go into these electronic cigarettes. And as you can tell by the packaging, they really do look like snacks and candy. Yeah, yeah. Here we have one um, called fried cream cakes, and it really smells like pancakes with a lot of syrup. <laughs> and then this one um, is um, watermelon candy flavor, and this is the liquid that's actually inside that box. And it's not in really until you flip the boxes over that you can see their e-juices and their nicotines and ingredients. I mean, it's, it's really shocking how much this looks like food packaging. And as you said, this smells like food too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, Anna, both, both Anna and I visited some vape shops uh, in the last week to buy these things. And um, not all products are available at vape shops. There were some that really look like other specific food products that we couldn't find in shops. Could you tell them yeah. about that? So on, online, uh, we saw some that uh, were packaged, or e-juices that were packaged in would look like mini whipped cream cans. We saw also um, some that came in would look like sriracha bottle sauce, a hot sauce. And, um, but they weren't hot sauce flavored. They came like licorice or uh, vanilla bean, so just fun flavors. Right, that, that appealed to kids. I right. We also saw one that looks like, uh, online, mm -hmm. that looks like an apple juice box. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'd actually like to ask our producer right now to post a link on the discussion page. It's to a website and a state campaign mm -hmm. called Flavors Hook Kids. And I'd urge you to look at it because um, until I saw this, I didn't realize what kinds of yeah. um, packaging these things were coming in. Um, so one of the things you'll actually find that website is the Jewel. Oh. So the Jewel is very popular um, of e-cigarette vaping or vape uh, device here. And so this is the Jewel, and this is the one that schools are kind of struggling with because it really does look like a flash drive. And so this here is a fake yeah, cartridge, but uh, what you do is the e-juices wouldn't actually go into this device. This one comes with its own nicotine cartridges, and they look like this. You would insert it in here, and that, that's what you end up um, inhaling. That looks like a tech gadget to it, me. It really does, and especially when you want to charge it, you can charge it on your laptop. You just like connect it like that, and it goes into your USB port. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Anna, um, you're a young woman. Did mm -hmm. you have any uh, issues when you went into these vape shops in terms of carding or anything like that? Not at all. So actually, um, I was surprised. I went in to go buy one of these e-juices and I had my ID ready and um, I didn't even need it. They really just asked me if I was 21. I said yes and that was it. Why is 21 important here? Oh, uh, 21 is the legal age in California to be able to buy these products. Um, as of two years ago, uh, California increased um, the age to purchase these products from 18 to 21. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, before we get too far into this discussion, Steve, uh, can you please explain the difference between e-cigarettes and traditional cigarettes? Um, what are the e-cigarettes and how do they work and how do they differ from what we older folks might be used to? Sure, so the traditional cigarettes, um, as we all know, you have to light them, um, so they're, they're considered combustible. And they actually use dried tobacco leaves um, and that's where uh, they get the nicotine from. Electronic cigarettes is an extraction of the nicotine from the tobacco leaf and then various flavors and chemicals are added in order to allow um, the, the user to create a vapor or something that they can inhale. And so the device has to have a battery charger of some type that heats up the vapor so that uh, the, the user can inhale it and it creates an aerosol um, that they can inhale and then exhale. So they get the, the nicotine and the flavor 
um, but it comes in a liquid form first. And then this aerosol that you're talking about, or vapor as it's called, um, is that what carries the nicotine into your into your lungs? Uh, and and it, when you answer this question, could you also answer, do all of these products contain nicotine? So first of all, the far, far majority of them do. It's very rare to find them that do not have nicotine in them. The whole goal of the product is to bring you back, to keep you buying that, your, that particular product, and that's done through um, nicotine, which is the most addictive substance that we know of. Um, and yes, the, the vapor that you inhale, it does contain some heavy metals and some other uh, chemicals that have been shown already in early stages to cause um, irritation to the nose, throat, and lungs, and specifically or especially the brain. And for kids that are still developing, um, that can be especially harmful. Um, a lot of people, however, don't understand that nicotine by itself, in addition to just being addictive, does cause bodily um, harm. I mean, it increases the, the heart rate, the, increases your blood pressure. It does things that your body shouldn't be doing, especially at a, a younger age. When you're developing. Um, are, do they have more nicotine than cigarettes? So that's crazy to, to when you find out that um, a lot of the products are un, unregulated. And so they may say it has this much in it, but in a laboratory, it may have a far less or far more the same product. Um, so it, it's not as regulated as we know, but a lot of them, so especially the Juul that has recently come out, they're very specific on how much that they, they have, and um, the Juul has a lot more um, nicotine than you would find in a typical e-cigarette, and what a lot of youth don't understand is just that small cartridge that comes with the Juul has as much nicotine as an entire package or 20 cigarettes. That's amazing. Um, so I want to be really clear though, um, is, is, uh, are e-cigs and e-juices considered, or e-juices, are they considered tobacco products? I think it really depends who you ask, right? Because when I talk to public health uh, people like Steve, um, they'll say, yes, they're a tobacco product. If I talk to uh, the manufacturers and people that promote it, retailers, they say this isn't a tobacco product. Does the government have a position on it? I know. Um, yeah, so the state of California has, um, they claim that it's a tobacco product, and so whenever you see anything that says no smoking, um, any particular sign that says no smoking, that includes um, anything associated with e-juice and electronic cigarettes, oh, too. That's, I wondered about that, actually. Mm -hmm. if that, so that's, if, yeah, they do consider it a tobacco product. If they apply. Actually, I'd like to bring up something here. Um, these devices and juices are marketed in part as a way to uh, transition or get off of smoking. Isn't that right? Smoking traditional cigarettes. And um, I'd like to read a tweet, a couple of tweets that came in from from uh, somebody before the conversation, but could you discuss that briefly? Sure, so yeah, when I talk to uh, the companies that make these, they say, you know, we are absolutely against kids having access to this, this is not meant for kids. Um, and they even have, you know, messages on their site. And one of the companies, Juul, actually, they have, they told me that they have a curriculum that they can share with schools, um, you know, to educate students and teachers on, you know, this, this is not for you. Well, but, but let's talk about, can you, can you address, Steve, the idea that people are using this device? I mean, I know it's not intended for kids, but some people are actually using it to stop smoking. Um, mm -hmm. I, let me read this, and then maybe you can okay. respond sure. to it. Um, this is from a guy named Sam. He said, I smoked for 23 years until seven months ago, and I'm no longer coughing my lungs out daily, risking emphysema, heart disease, and lung cancer. That's because of vaping. Uh, he went on to say, um, it's nicotine replacement that contains no carcinogens or carbon monoxide, is inhaled like cigarettes, doesn't smell awful, and I can gradually reduce nicotine levels. Gum and patches never worked for me. I smoked since age 13. Um, he said tobacco should be illegal, which is kind of raising that question again about whether this is a tobacco product. But, but for him, e-cigs helped. Right, so um, first of all, congratulations. That is a great thing to be able to quit smoking. Um, and we have heard, I have personally talked with, with people who have told me that because of vaping products, they were able to quit. 
Um, and originally that's what the product was designed or at least that's what it was marketed as. Um, but as we now go in and study large populations who are using um, vaping as a way to quit, we have found out that the success rate isn't as high as um, we would like to see. In fact, um, they have found that using vaping as a way to quit is no more successful than doing it without using vaping. So um, if you, you know, again, look at the larger populations, and in, in fact, when kids are using vaping, they, it actually leads them into using other types of tobacco products, traditional cigarettes within the year that they start. Um. Actually, that's something that I that I wanted to ask you about. Um, beyond the larger population studies, what are you seeing when it comes to youth um, smoking? I saw some data that showed that uh, y young people, teenagers, are smoking traditional cigarettes less, but they're smoking e-cigarettes perhaps more. Right. We definitely have seen that in uh, Yolo County. Um, when electronic cigarettes first hit the market around 2007, between then and 2011, we saw um, a tripling in youth smoking rates. And we were really confused. We didn't understand what was going on because we'd been seeing a, a drop for decades. And then as we looked into it closer, we found out that Marlboro, which used to be the number one tobacco product used by youth, has been replaced with some type of flavored vaping product. Um, and because it's so much easier to use, it's less irritating and because of all the flavors. So we are seeing that kids now who are smoking, they're very, 90% of those kids, their first experience with a tobacco product is um, a flavored tobacco that's, product. That's interesting. And, and actually, I wanted to ask Anna about the flavors. Could you discuss that a little bit? Because, I mean, obviously we've got a couple of mm -hmm. kid-friendly flavors here. What are... Right, so there are thousands of flavors out there. Um, and they have, you know, you have strawberry kiwi, you have mango burst, so really fruity flavors. You also have some with really crazy names, like there's a unicorn vomit, you know, so <laughs> it's just like whipped cream flavor. And it's just, there's so many out there and um, online you can probably find the most of them. Didn't you say, Steve, there were 15,000 flavors? Yeah, that's the last data that I saw, 15 different thousand flavors around e-cigarettes and some of them don't the names of them who, who knows what the flavor are mm -hmm. but they're all sweet or they're all very um candy oriented uh, yeah. for a, a sweet tooth type yeah sometimes marketing. also when you walk into the vape shop they'll have them um divided um so you'll have like dessert flavors and beverage flavors right you know mm -hmm. and fruit flavors. right so you really just caters to all sorts right mm -hmm. right and and when you walk into those vape shops as you said they smell pretty great they smell very good <laughs> um so I'd like to take a moment to remind our audience to please post any questions that you may have. Um, we will try to take them and try to answer them if possible. Um, I'm gonna move on to Steve. Uh, you mentioned that your youth rates, your youth smoking rates had tripled in that time period. Uh, is that what spurred Yolo County into taking action? Um, indirectly, yes. We were actually working on trying to make all tobacco products less accessible or harder for them to get and while we were discussing different strategies um, a Yolo County Board of Supervisor was in the meeting and we were talking about flavored tobacco and, and um, he asked you know well, what could we do or what are other communities doing so at that time we talked we we gave them uh, some options and he asked us to come and present to the whole board educate them about flavored tobacco and then propose some strategies that uh, we could do or that they could do as a, a, a board to make flavored tobacco um, harder for kids to get a hold of. So what ultimately did the county decide to do? So ultimately they voted to uh, do a complete ban of all flavored tobacco. So um, that's not just electronic um, or e-juice, but all tobacco the small swisher sweet little cigars that are grape and apple flavored, chewing tobacco that has any kind of flavor in it that's not just tobacco flavor. Um, those are, and menthol, which is a, a very big um, product. And so the board adopted a ban um, or a 100% ban of youth, of sale, of course you can still use it, but of sale in the 20 stores in the unincorporated area. 
Okay, so this is uh, twenty in unincorporated Yolo County, right. which is not the majority. Is that right? No, it's a, it's a small amount. There's a, about two hundred stores in the in the whole county. What about this? Uh, other b larger cities in, in uh, Yolo County like Davis or Woodland or Winters? So they have shown in the past to be um, very concerned about tobacco use and they have adopted secondhand smoke policies and other policies to make it difficult for kids to get tobacco. In this particular item, uh, we they have reached out to us, they've asked us for sample policy, they've asked us questions. Um, and so our next goal is to start helping them to become more educated to see if they're interested in doing the same thing. But it's up to the cities. It is up to the cities and when the board adopted their policy they recognized that the 20 stores wouldn't have the impact that they would like but uh, passing a policy like that, a public health policy, sends a, a strong message to youth, to parents, and to the other communities that this is something they support and that they would encourage other communities to do. I see we have a comment, but I would like to come back to that in just a moment um, because I wanted to ask Anna, um, Yolo County is not alone in doing this, is that right? Are there other communities that have taken action? Yeah, so we are seeing some communities, especially around the Bay Area, that are taking their own action. Um, and they say, advocates for this say it's because the FDA hasn't done enough. Um, and we'll get to that question that we're seeing there in a bit. So uh, the city of Oakland, for example, last year uh, passed an ordin ordinance that is supposed to um, ban flavored tobacco products, um, and that's supposed to, take, supposed to take effect later this summer. Okay. Um, uh, Contra Costa County also has some restrictions on that, and they um, uh, they also did the you know uh, unincorporated area ban and uh, only near schools though. So it really depends on the areas and communities we're speaking of what they're what each decides to do right and i think one very big city county is making a big decision about this next week at the primary yes. is that right so, yeah all eyes are on san francisco on tuesday um they're supposed to pass one of the most restrictive uh bans on this so uh what happened is last year the board of supervisors banned flavored tobacco products there but the um and that was supposed to take effect this year. Uh, that ended up happening because the tobacco industry and small business um, owners um, and just the opposition were able to gather enough signatures um, to try to reverse that. And they um, were able to put it on the ballot. So that's uh, voters that will, will decide on Tuesday whether they want to keep this ban or if they want to get rid of it. Interesting. So that's a big question for voters. And you see you have some mailers yeah, here, I think. That's Proposition E that they'll be voting on. So we have this yes on E. And this one uh, here pictures a child um, with an e-juice and then a bag of candy, a sour gum, uh, sour worms. And they look, you know, very similar. Well, this is exactly what we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And okay. then we have also a no on E. And the no on E um, flyer here is just saying, you know, it's going to be ineffective um, because people in San Francisco can just go to neighboring cities and buy these products. There. Or online even. Right. Um, and I think you had even mentioned, you know, Oh, well, this is, uh, I'll come back to that mm -hmm. question. Let's take a couple of questions from, from our audience right now. This is a comment that says, 15,000 flavors. I know the FDA now regulates tobacco products. What are they doing or not to learn more about and regulate e-cigs and other flavored tobacco and nicotine product products? That's an excellent question. Um, mm -hmm. Who wants to take that one? Both of you? Well, I can start just by saying that the FD FDA has delayed action on this till 2022, so they have some time. <laughs> Um, but um, I do know that they did send out letters to some of the manufacturers, like kind of warning them about the specific packaging and kind of luring kids with this candy-like and food product. Um, so they've warned them, but they're delaying any action for four years? Right, is my understanding. Yes. Do you know why? Well, usually it's just to collect as much data as possible that they can get all the research and all the information about um, marketing and about what's actually in it to the, and to make sure that they um, use correct language when they go into it. And so these are essentially unregulated by the FDA, is that the idea? Yeah, they they have been unregulated for a very long when they first came out and so often you would purchase a product from one company and a different product from the same company and in the labs they were discovering that the level of nicotine were completely different so you never knew 
exactly how much nicotine or what you were getting in it because they were unregulated. So they're trying to, that's one thing that they can definitely try to improve on. Uh, this actually relates, the next question relates to that a little bit. Uh, the question is, is the nicotine extracted from tobacco? Are there other sources of nicotine? No, nicotine just comes from tobacco, as far as I know. Yeah, you had <laughs> mentioned something about there's no way to synthesize it, is that right? Yeah, they don't, you don't go into the lab and say, oh, let's make some nicotine. They definitely ha you know, have to get it uh, from the, the field and from the tobacco product. And, and so it's still a lot of money for tobacco farmers um, uh, that, that you know, have been producing traditional cigarettes mm -hmm. for a long time. And it's a new market. Definitely a new market. Um, and we have another great question. Keep them coming. Um, are legislators in Sacramento aware companies are marketing their vaping products to kids in packaging like this? Has there been any dis discussion or legislation, or of legislation, excuse me, to stop it? I don't know the answer. It's a great question. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't definitely know the answer. He knows the answer. All right, <laughs> Steve. So I actually was involved uh, two weeks ago. Every couple of years, myself and colleagues from around the state, we go to the state capitol for a day which is called um, Information and Education Day. And we break up, and de depending on our district, and we go and we meet with our legislators to educate them about products or tobacco issues. And this year, this was the item. We um, gave them pictures and da mm -hmm. fact sheets showing um, how they look like or, or how they're so appealing to youth. Um, so we did educate them. Um, we're not allowed to actually uh, lobby, so it, we're strictly we're not there to tell them to vote one way or another. We're simply there to say this is the issue, and um, you know it'd be great if something could be done. So there are some uh, legislators who are in the process of actually trying to get a full ban for the whole state, but that would be very unlikely right now. Usually the, the way these things work is like we're doing it with the individual cities, counties, and then as it becomes uh, statewide, then it's easier for state legislators to say, see, this is happening. And so I think, you know, it's gonna take a while if, if at all to do that. That's interesting. So, uh, so short of a state ban, is there anything on a smaller level that legislators are, are proposing um, that you know of? No. Uh, no, no. Um, okay. it's just the various counties and cities that, that are, are doing taking their action. Own. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have another question, probably for Steve. Um, mm. <laughs> have there been any known cases of nicotine poisoning or over overdosing from vaping? From vaping? Oh, before the vaping part, I was going to say definitely. Um, but from the e juice, uh, there have been, after e juice was introduced into our market, um, poison control phone calls began to increase because small children, again, were um, getting into the e-juice thinking oh. that it was uh, something that you would consume. And in fact, this is the small, but you can buy them in large pitchers and large glass containers that look like apple juice or something in the mm -hmm. refrigerator. And so you can definitely get nicotine poisoning, um, but from the actual vaping, vaping, I don't know of, of uh, any. I see. So yes, from the juices, drinking it perhaps, but not vaping necessarily. Yeah. So, um, you know, one one thing that um, if our purchasing age for tobacco is legally 21, how is it that young people are getting their hands on these products? Well, when you browse online uh, for these products, um, usually when you enter a website, you have to verify that you are of age and you just click yes and then you can look around. But then when you actually go to purchase them, there is these websites, most websites will have a, like an age verification process and they're supposed to check the information provided. Um, but I think maybe an easier way is the third party sites. Maybe you can find some of these products on eBay and Amazon. And nowadays you have like Amazon Locker. So instead of these products going straight to your home where your parents could see them, maybe you can just pick them up out of one of these lockers. That's interesting. And then um, <clears throat> as has happened with traditional cigarettes, it's oftentimes I think youth will ask friends or older friends or, isn't that right? Yeah, it's, you can, um, the college age uh, student 24 or 21 and above is is a uh, one area where youth can get or an older brother even parents sometimes will provide it um, and it's also not that difficult uh, depending on the community to just purchase it directly if you know how to become familiar with the 
store, um, maybe dress a certain way, look a certain way. Um, although most stores do definitely mm -hmm. try and not to sell to minors, um, sometimes they can they can find ways around that. Um, <clears throat> so speaking of youth getting their hand on this, hands on this, what are schools seeing in terms of e-cigarettes and vaping? Yeah, so schools have been struggling with this for a bit now, and the jewel, especially in, within the past year. So um, I've heard reports of uh, kids smoking them in class and the teacher isn't looking. Um, and what they'll do, as one student explained to me, and he kind of showed me, it was funny, it was um, they'll put their backpack on their lap and they'll take a hit from the jewel and then blow into their backpack so that the backpack will catch the vapor cloud wow. and you really can't even tell. And the teachers don't notice? Well, because it, you, the backpack like hides the vapor and it smells so nice, it just kind of it probably smells like body spray or something, yeah. you know? <laughs> and you had mentioned to me too that um, uh, bathrooms are the place to smoke, right? Oh, bathrooms are the hot spots. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely where they're um, schools are seeing this the most and it, uh, some of the uh, kids like to make jokes that well at least the school bathrooms smell nice now smell <laughs> nice and fruity yeah um, <laughs> and um, uh, you also mentioned to me through your reporting you found that some districts are, are actually banning flash drives because these things look so much like the, the, the gadgets is yeah, that right so schools are taking all types of measure um, and one of them is banning flash drives um, I heard one school was actually uh, took the main door out of the uh, from the restroom. Like obviously they can keep they keep the the stall doors, but the main <laughs> restrooms just so in case the vapor comes out of the bathroom, the administrators can smell it from outside. Um, Yolo County. So the same thing. Um, most of my information comes from my son, who's a senior, <laughs> and he um, first the very first thing that he brought up years ago was. Um, he asked me, is this a water vapor? Because all the kids at school who are doing this are telling me it's just water. And I was um, very surprised. So I would educate him. He would try and educate his friends. Um, but now I'm definitely hearing that kids are using um, right in classroom, around campus. Uh, kids will come to school with a particular product, charge for hits off of it. Um, so instead of selling <laughs> cigarettes like they used to, they will charge you, you know, take a hit off of this. So um, it's definitely, so, and, and because it doesn't look like a traditional cigarette, it doesn't light up, doesn't stink, it's much more uh, hard to detect them. Right, I think Anna saw something about that in her reporting. It yeah, was there was, I was following this uh, Reddit thread and there were like, there were some of the users were saying like, how much do you charge for, for a hit? And it would be like, I charge $3. I charge freshmen $3 for a hit. And there's 200 hits in that, in one cartridge, <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Supposedly, I mean, that's yeah. very entrepreneurial. Um, so we have a couple of questions here. Um, do these young kids, uh, well, actually, let me start with a comment. This is a comment, ticket all minors caught with any vaping stuff. They are breaking the law. School officials should take anything found on school grounds and destroy. I, I'm wondering, I bet, do you know if schools destroy what they find, essentially? Uh, they, they, I don't know if they destroy it, but they do confiscate mm -hmm. it and they don't give it back. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm assuming they do destroy it. I, okay. hope, they do. I hope they destroy it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then here's another good question is, do these young kids have credit cards to buy this online? Well, I don't know if they themselves own credit cards, but anytime my son wants to purchase something online, uh, you know, he just, just go right into my account. And as long as he asks me what it is, I say sure, and he can just click right on it. Uh, so it's not hard to use, find a credit card. Any credit card will work. Right, right. Um, Steve, you know, do you have advice for parents and school administrators um, for what to look out for, or wh what to do? Well, I think that the most important thing to do is for parents and, and school administrators, and I think we're doing better at this than we used to, but we often look at tobacco as just, uh, it's just tobacco. We've got these, you know, cocaine and marijuana and all these other harder drugs, but, um, you know, tobacco is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States. Still? It still is. Wow. Okay. Um, we've made huge jumps in California but nationwide we still have a ways to go and so take it seriously uh, get yourself educated by going to those websites you'll really um, it'll, it'll be shocking as you mentioned uh, what you'll see there and, and specifically how they're marketed to um, youth 
but um, get yourself educated and you know have a conversation with with your kids and uh, with your school to to find out you can always um, uh, you know go talk to the local health department there's a person there like me there who has pamphlets brochures other materials that they can provide also actually uh, speaking of those websites I'm going to ask our producer to post a couple of them one is a Stanford University uh, website that offers advice to parents I mm -hmm. think and the other one is called still blowing smoke mm -hmm. and that's a state uh, funded I think yes. website is that right, right. Um, we have another question and, and we're going to uh, take it but uh, we will wrap up soon unless we get more questions so uh, just a reminder if you want to ask please ask um, and this question is do kids get high from vaping what is the point of wanting to vape in class I don't get it <laughs> yes so there is supposed to be a buzz that, that that's what the kids explain to me is that they get a buzz out of this yeah the buzz is important um, and to be able to do it in class, it's just like when I was in the eighth grade. We couldn't have gum in class, but we all tried it <laughs> because it was the rebellious thing to do. We tried to see how far we could go um, before we got our demerits. Um, so that's why I think taking it more seriously. Um, of course, they don't like the idea of expelling kids or suspending kids because they want them in school. Um, so um, different tactics for making it harder to, to bring it in. but. That buzz is important and that whole rebellious side of, you know, trying to get away with what you know you can't do. You know, I just want to add something to that that I found interesting when I was looking this up on social media. It's like on Instagram or, you know, on Twitter, you'll find um, some uh, teens who will try to teach other uh, or try to show you how to actually like use a vaping pen to smoke marijuana. Like they're just being very mm -hmm. creative. Like it's not, you know, try to instead of buying a, a vape or a pen for a marijuana use, they'll just try to use the same one. Right, and so they're creating their own. Cre <laughs> um, yeah, I was just gonna mention, um, I mean, Anna Story, um, ask, I'll ask our producer again to post Anna Story, she wrote about the jewel recently. Um, it was super hot on Twitter and got mm -hmm. hundreds of retweets and most of them was among young kids who were just saying, you know, leave us alone essentially, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, uh, and didn't like the fact that the older folks are, are stop ratting us out are figuring it out <laughs> exactly exactly okay here's another question can you read us one of the labels of those products in front of you so we can see what other shocking ingredients might be in there that's a good question um you guys have better eyesight than i do probably let's see so the ingredients in here vegetable glycerin uh natural and or artificial flavorings water and nicotine oh well, that's pretty pure it seems like or, or I so, don't know well that's what uh, that's what's in the juice what the problem is is that when it becomes an aerosol or it becomes it, it's heated up and now it's inhaled then you create um, chemicals that you should not be inhaling um, oh so part of it is through the combustion process the combust yeah it's just like a tobacco a cigarette you know just inhaling on a cigarette doesn't do anything until you light it up and then that's when other chemicals that are created, the carbon monoxide and, and other things. Not to say that e-cigarettes have the same thing. Um, the other interesting fact is that when the companies who create the flavors for these products, they create flavors for everything, food, um, you know, all types of flavors. When the, these people started coming to them and saying, buying their flavors, they came right out and said, our flavors are designed to be consumed, digested, mm -hmm. and we have uh, we don't know what will happen if you inhale them. So we have no responsibility if you use them for inhaling. So um, the ingredients that are on the package is not always what's in the vapor itself that's inhaled. That's interesting. Um, another question: What can you tell us about the companies who make and market these vaping products? Are they typically smaller businesses, or is there big corporate money in this? It's also an excellent question. Mm -hmm. Well, originally they were all very small. The first electronic cigarette was, um, I think, some college students who were working on a project. Um, but the more and more the products are now being purchased by the tobacco industry main main companies. So, and I think that one of the biggest opponents of the San Francisco um, measure is. I think it's R.J. Reynolds. I can look right now, but it's one of the major tobacco. Yeah. They're bankrolling a lot of the, uh, you know, the efforts to fight these things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, folks. Um, I, do we have any more questions? 
I think we're probably going to wrap it up, but I thought this was a very interesting discussion. Yeah, sure. um, thank you both for sharing your knowledge with us, and thank you for joining us today. Um, if you, We're going to be doing these about monthly, so if you have any ideas for future topics, please let us know. Um, thank you.